come and give us a song. But prior to him coming, we're going to go to God in prayer. And then Seba Branch will come and give us a song. Amen. If you don't mind, pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for another day that you've touched our eyes, that you have allowed us to see. Lord, thank you for bringing us to this place. Thank you for allowing everybody to make it here and give us a safe passage. Lord, be with us tonight as we uplift your name as well as the Southwestern College. Thank you for the core groups that will sing tonight. And Lord, we pray when all this is over, all the glory will go to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. What's Branch? Everybody doing all right tonight? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Definitely all the glory belongs to our Father uh, in heaven. Amen. Amen. But we just want to tell the Lord, uh, thank you for what he's done. Amen. Amen. And we want to praise him for all that he's done. Uh, we want to say hallelujah uh, to the God on high for just being who he is. Hallelujah. Do, 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 do. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah, say hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah, now hallelujah. Oh, 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 well now let the spirit of the Lord, yeah, rise. Let the spirit, yeah, rise. Let the praises, oh, let it rise. Oh, 
to come tonight, Sister Williams. She's gonna come, she's the former core director. Y'all give her a hand. She's the former core director of Southwestern, and we're in her hands. Okay, all right. Ooh, y'all know how to sing in Mississippi. Hallelujah. So, we started a little late. It is not our fault. Whoever made those hamburgers, and the hot dogs. So we, so we got through the hot dogs and we were good. And then we tasted the hamburgers and we went left from there. So that's not our fault. That's not our fault. Tell Brother Wallace, that's not our fault. <laughs> good evening. It is so good to see all of you. Um, we are so excited to be here and cannot thank you enough for the hospitality that we have received. It has been just awesome. And Brother Wallace, from the time we called and asked if we could come, has just been nothing but supportive. We know that Southwestern is supported in this area. And I don't know how long it's been since we've been here, but we came to share with you some great news about Southwestern Christian College. And most importantly, we want to reintroduce you to Southwestern because we know you know we know you know but we want to reintroduce you because we've been you know COVID took over we've been closed and stuff like that but we have been back open for a while and doing great things and there's some great things happening on our campus this is not a fundraising effort we are here to recruit students I am part a, of a group of former classmates uh, called the Friends of SWCC. We formed several years ago and went to Dr. Seamster and asked Dr. Seamster what we could do as alumni to help our school. Dr. Seamster said what Southwestern needs is students. So we set out on a mission to try and recruit students for Southwestern Christian College. We went to the Delta of Mississippi a couple of years ago and had a life altering journey there. We learned things that we never will find in our textbooks. Never been taught it and it probably will never be taught to us. It was life altering. And now we have just come from um, McAlmont in Little Rock and this morning we were in Memphis at Quince Road and now we're, we're closing out our journey with all of you here at West Oak Grove. And already having a fantastic time. <laughs> it's good to see so many young people here because you are our future and it is you that we came to see. We're glad your parents are here because parents are good, they drive us places. Without parents, there's a lot of places we couldn't get to. But, <laughs> but we are glad to see you. So I'm gonna tell you about the, the order of the program. First and foremost, I want to um, introduce you to our friends. And then we have a special alumna who is here who came quite a distance just to hear the chorus. And I'm gonna have him come up. 
and then the chorus will come and do a couple of selections and then we'll come back and hear from D2. Um, and then I'll tell you the rest of the program. And at the end of the evening, we have an escape room activity that is a lot of fun. So don't go anywhere because you're gonna wanna be a part of this escape room. We have prizes and they're good prizes also. So as I was telling you about myself, I'm Veronica Williams. I was the, uh, I'm the class of 1982. I went to Harding University after Southwestern and then came back to Southwestern to teach and conduct the world-renowned Southwestern Acapella Chorus for 10 years. And um, I am now the Fine Arts Director at Cristo Rey Fort Worth College Prep High School in Fort Worth. Good evening, my name is Dolores Miller Myers. I'm originally from Houston, Texas. I currently live in Dallas. And um, I'm the class of 84, Miss Southwestern 83-84. And um, I currently, I'm a registered and licensed dietitian and a certified group fitness instructor. Hello, my name is Janine Kasee Mams. I'm the class of 1977. I'm from Bakersfield, California. Yes, I came a long way. <laughs> yes. Um, I am now retired. I retired from Dallas Independent School District. Um, I was an educator for over 34 years. Also, I taught at the college level. I taught at TWU as an adjunct professor. I now live in Mesquite, Texas. Hello, my name is Belinda Willis Yohanana, and I'm originally from Meridian, Mississippi. I now reside in Rawlett, Texas. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, actually a graduate of Southwestern Christian College class of 1983. I am actually working now as a clinical marketing um, liaison for Vibro Hospitals of Richardson. And thank you guys for inviting us here. We really appreciate it. Hello, my name is Lazarus Nyahanana, originally from Harare, Zimbabwe. At Southwestern, when I came in 87, I found my true love, Belinda. Right. Right. So uh, I am truly, truly Southwestern forever. Uh, currently, I am the director of rooms with the Hotel Indigo in Dallas. Okay, um, my name is Dr. Robert Burt uh, Jr., actually, and um, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. I'm 1984 graduate of Southwestern Christian College, part of the first four-year Bible program. I graduated there. I currently preach in Toledo, Ohio, at Glass City Church, and um, I'm just blessed. Thank you so much. So as the chorus gets prepared to come forward, I want to tell you why we introduced ourselves with what we are doing, um, what we when, how we got to Southwestern or when we got to Southwestern and since we, got to, since we left Southwestern, what we're doing now. The reason is because our message to you is that you can go anywhere from Southwestern Christian College. It does not matter what you aspire to be, you can reach your goal, you can achieve your dream, you can reach for the stars from Southwestern Christian College. I always tell people Southwestern is a little school that graduates big people. We have, we have an amazing um, history and an even more amazing legacy. And some of our legacy is in all of our students. And one of those students is Marcus Black and he's gonna come and tell you his journey to Southwestern. Y'all doing all right tonight? Y'all yeah. yeah. doing all right tonight? Yeah. All right, I'm not going to let y'all take the easy way out. I am Marcus Black. I am a resident of Oklahoma City by way of Hernando, Mississippi. Yeah. At West Oak Grove Church of Christ. I appreciate y'all making some noise. Um, so for those who do not know me, I also go by M. Black Speaks. Yeah, that's me. That's crazy. I appreciate y'all. 
And, and I am a best-selling author. I, I am a life coach. I am an international <laughs> motivational speaker, literally. You Google Les Brown, one of the top speakers in the world. Went on tour with him. We spoke in New York City to a crowd, televised. Crazy, but all of that started with roots of me being here. So I got my foundations here. And uh, I got, got a shout out to Alvin and thank him for letting me get over here, and play with the microphone and learn about music because I, football was everything. That was what I wanted to do. However, an accident ended those aspirations. Those of you who are from here, you know about that. I'm not even really supposed to be alive. If you saw the car, those of you who did see the car, you understand what I'm saying. But God had other plans and we still here. So, spoiler alert. But that didn't change the fact. I was a horrible student at my first college. And uh, there was traumas in my childhood. And I was having to come and face the music. And so what happened was, <laughs> I was in the summer and I was trying to figure out what I was doing with my life, to be honest. I was lost. I didn't know what was next. And I was in a depressed place. And then there was a group who I didn't know much about from Terrell, Texas, none other than Southwestern Christian College. And they were on their annual summer tour. And they came here. And they did a show here. It was, and I was like, man, that's dope. Like, it was amazing. I was blown away at the melodious sounds, which y'all should be getting your appetite, your ears, and your hearts ready for here now. But after they finished, they were like, you should come. And it was people who were my age, and they're like, you should come, you should come, you should come. And I was like, yes, I should. I'm not. <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> but when I went home, I prayed about it. And I thought about it. And then I reached out to them. So two months later, I packed all of my belongings in two trash bags <laughs> with $25 in my pocket, and I drove to Terrell, Texas. And I can honestly say that was the best decision I ever made in my life. Because of the foundations of learning about music and getting to play around with the microphone, I ain't have no way to pay for Southwestern. Y'all gonna get some, I heard y'all might be in for a special treat tonight, but it was different at the time. And I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. And they had auditions to join this group. I was like, it's just a scholarship. That's all I need to know. <laughs> so I auditioned and I made the group. And this group introduced me, the school introduced me to lifelong friendships, lifelong mentorships. I think we might have traveled to, I don't know, 30 or 40 states between summer tour and spring tour, this way, that way. I met my wife of 10 years, who we now have two kids at Southwestern Christian College. <laughs> And more, most importantly, I got the foundations that I have been able to stand on, the giants who came before us to give us an opportunity. Because whether you know it or not, in this here country, we ain't always had opportunities. However, comma, there are people who went before us to make sure that people that look like you and I could go and get a Christian education. And so this group has gone and taken it upon themselves to say, we owe it to those who went before us and sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears so that we can have an opportunity. And so this group is here to expose you to an opportunity. To expose you to a family. So what I'm asking is that you open your minds. You open your hearts. And you take the opportunity before you're serious. Because just like mine, if you do, it can change your life. Thank you. Amazing things come from Hernando, Mississippi. Yeah. yeah, a little place that produces big people. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you the Southwestern Christian College a cappella chorus under the direction of Leonte Savala. Leonte is a son of Southwestern. He graduated from Southwestern, went, to, went on to the Fisk University and sang with the Fisk Jubilee Singers and came back home to teach Southwestern. How y'all doing? All right, well, I'm gonna ask y'all again, because every, every place that we've been, every church we've been, They've given us a certain energy. So, how y'all doing? All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let me let me explain this. 
This is history in the making. So you know that we had COVID, and COVID kind of shut everything down and put things in, into perspective. But this is the first time that this particular group is going out of the state of Texas. So you have a treat to say, you know what? When Southwestern was making them on the move in the 21st century, I was, I was a part of the first audience to hear Southwestern. Because at this point, we're building, we're going to grow. And it's going to go up and up and yeah. up and up. So I just hope that you all enjoy. We're going to give you, you also have another treat, because uh, not everybody got this opportunity. But we're going to give you seven selections. All right. So <laughs> y'all have a, a treat. They looking at me like that, like, oh, OK. They'll be fine.
I enjoy hearing me sing, so. Because 
Sometimes when I look around me and the flowers and the rains and the flowy rivers, I, I wonder how can an airplane fly across the sky? How am I able to rise every morning? Lord, oh Lord, must be, must be Jesus. Jesus, mama, mama, Jesus, sweet baby Jesus, must be Jesus, 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 sweet Jesus, oh Lord. fails when I let go of my Savior's hand. I feel alone, alone. I feel just like an old age, old age man. But when I rest upon my Savior's hands, I feel like a baby in my mother's arms. Ain't nobody on me. Ain't nobody like mine. Jesus. Sweet Jesus, my Savior, my provider, my best friend, his name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, oh, he can change, he can, he can change your life, he'll be right by y'all anybody believe in the name of jesus has he healed your body oh jesus jesus oh there's something about the name of 
Jesus, sweet Jesus, mighty Jesus, my healer Jesus, provider Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when I get to heaven, 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 yeah, you know what there'll be? There'll be peace, there'll be joy, there'll be happiness. I won't have to worry, no. I won't have to stress, no. I'll be sitting right next to my Lord. I'll be singing and screaming, Jesus, 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 sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, oh, Jesus, my, my. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I can't say nothing, I say, mm, 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 Sometimes I'll be out to work like this. out to people and we didn't know what was going to happen um, and I was in grad school so I'm, it's a pandemic I ain't got no job I'm going to school for free you telling me I got a two week spring break I'm trying to figure out okay how I'm going to graduate because I, I, I got to get, get my life going but I gotta, I'm sitting there thinking about what I was taught at a younger age and I remember every knee shall bow Every tongue shall confess at the name of Jesus. And then I had to spell it. J-E-S-U-S. And it just seemed like any time I said that, there was this strength that mustered up me to get, to do, get through life. And so one thing that I realized as a student is that virtual education, that don't work for me. Mm -mm. Virtual church service, that don't work for me. It's, it's, it's beneficial for some people, but it, it didn't work for me. So when I'm, I'm looking on YouTube and I'm looking on Zoom and we trying to sing together and echoes here, echoes there, and I'm just like, I miss being around people. I miss being edified. I miss being around people who love God. I miss being around people who go through everyday stuff. And so the pandemic taught me that Everybody's the same. We bleed the same, we cry, and we all go through the same thing, everyday life stuff. But it's when we come together and we call on the name of Jesus. He can change your life. He can change, change your life. He will be by your side. Ain't nobody like my, 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 my,
my savior, my best friend. Southwestern. All right. And again, like Brother Savala said, that was the first time these students have been out of the state of Texas. In fact, this is the first recruiting performance they've ever done. Yay. 
So we're going to ask you to bear with us a few more minutes before we do the escape room because I want you to, to understand why um, Southwestern is important as the only HBCU that exists among Churches of Christ in the world. So I'm going to ask Dr. Robert Burt and uh, Captain Marshawn, followed by Captain Marshawn Ford, to tell you how they got to Southwestern and where we go from here. Great singing and taking me back for some few years, not me, few. Um, I'm Marshawn Ford, actually I'm Sister Ford first, and then I'm Captain Ford uh, with the military. And my journey started at SWCC, Southwestern Christian College, in 1979 to 1981. But prior to that, as a little girl, my grandmother made sure that I was with them when they went down to Southwestern for the lectureship. All I really remember is sitting in that building all day and then getting to eat out of her trunk after, at lunchtime. Um, and one of the um, best things it was that the foundation was set as far as the church. We knew that we put God first and anything we do as a family, it can't do nothing but go up. So with that being said, I was the first one of my whole family that graduated from Southwestern Christian College. Um, I say my mom uh, gave me an op uh, option that Southwestern would be, the first two years of my college career would be at Southwestern. It wasn't an option, it was a, you were gonna go. You know? So automatically I knew I was going to Southwestern. The deal with Southwestern then, as, as we talk, I went from there to Abilene Christian to Phoenix, University of Phoenix, but nothing took the place of Southwestern Christian College. During that time of going there, I knew I wanted whatever children I had to make sure that that be their first two years of college plus a Christian foundation. So with that being said, I have four sons they go from 36 to 27, and each one of them graduated from Southwestern. And as uh, we speak right now, uh, all four of them have their masters because of that foundation. So I can't give nothing but praise to God because it's nothing, it's nothing but a God. Family don't always mean blood. And I have to say no matter where I went, no matter what, Southwestern, is part of me and my family. So I just want y'all to know with any of your young babies, no matter how young they are, give SWCC first dibs at them because that foundation that y'all are setting now continues on. And that's what I love the most. Southwestern is theirs for us and our families. So thank you all for having us here. Y'all y'all doing all right? So let me let me tell you my story real quick. Um, and I and I and, and I when I, and I say Dr. Robert G. Bird Jr. I'm gonna tell you why I say that. Okay. I'm, 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 so I'm, I'm, what I want to do is marry something. I want to marry the story of Scripture with the story of my life, because I believe that that's how it works. So let me do this as as expeditiously as I can. And the Bible is it's called a meta narrative. The Bible has four parts to it. Uh, when, you, when you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there's four parts to it. You have creation, you have fall, you have redemption, and then we want to call it recreation. Those are the four parts of the story of the Bible. You start with creation, you go to the fall, you go to recreation, and then you go to uh, recreation. And it's all in Genesis, but it runs from Genesis to Revelation. Now, I'm not sure how that fits into my story, okay, uh, as quick as I can. Um, Veronica, I won't be long. Um, creation. Um, um, so the Bible says that we were created in the image of God, Omega Day. Uh, it's the Hebrew word, and, and, and so that's our spirit, not flesh. It's our spirit. We all were created in the image of God. That's the first part of the story of the Bible. So I was created in the image of God. Okay, I was born into this world. 
Um, and here's the interesting thing about my life. I, I was born in um, Jacksonville, Florida, a, a, a part of a town called Mixon Town. It was rough. Mixon Town was tough, man. It was full of bullies and athletes and um, people who didn't do any work in school, people who did a lot of work in school. My neighborhood was a huge African-American neighborhood in Jacksonville. I mean, it was huge. We knew everybody. We, everybody knew everybody. We all played ball together. We, we all did a whole lot of things. So I grew up in Mixon Town. Um, and um, when, I was, when I was 13 years old, I was 13. Watch my story. I'm created in the image of God. Watch my story. When I was 13 years old, I got a phone call that gave me information that I never knew. Let, let me tell you about that phone call. I found out that day that my mother was not my mother. I found out I was adopted. I got a phone call from my adopted mother who didn't ask my mother, didn't ask my dad, didn't ask anybody. She just made a phone call that changed my life. You know, because I didn't, I didn't know I was adopted. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I didn't know I was adopted. Okay, that's, that's my creation story. You know, I didn't come out of my mother's womb. I came out of somebody else's womb. And I found that out, man. It was... And, and, and so I shut my emotions down with all of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all I'm saying. But watch, 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 watch my creation. Uh, I discovered, um, ladies and gentlemen, that um, that shaped my story. Because my, my biological mother had a whole lot of issues. You know, I mean a whole lot of issues. And I began to recognize how blessed I was to be um, Gloria Burst's son. That's my story. Okay, that's, that's the creation story. I'm going to show you how all this fits into the Bible. The second part of the story of the Bible is, is sin. It's fallenness. I can't count the sins I committed. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't even remember some of the sins that I committed. You know, I'm telling you, I, I lived in Mixon Town and I sinned. I, I, I said I sinned. I, fall, I was falling short of everything. But watch God. I'm telling you, I was falling short of everything. I did a whole lot of stuff, but watch God's protection. Watch, watch this, y'all, because he was moving in me into redemption. I, I was in the neighborhood. Uh, let, let me tell you a quick story. I remember one night, I, there four of my best friends, you know, and I got a lot of stories. You know, it was one summer night. It was Saturday night. It was hot. It was burning up. Everybody was miserable. And I was hanging out with my friends at one of my friends' house, and they were smoking weed. Can y'all listen to me? Now, guess this. Hear this, y'all. I never smoked weed. I hung around guys who would drink, get drunk, smoke weed, and get high. I never would drink. Never. And I never did smoke weed, but these were my buddies. All right? I'm, I'm trying to tell you, God was moving me into redemption. I never did. I never, I never, never, never did it. And so it was hot one night. You know, and, and one of the things my father made us do, he made us work. Like he made us cut yards. So we would take our lawnmowers and walk to the other side of the track. So I always had a little money in my pocket, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I didn't do it. And so I said, something strange tonight. And they were acting strange. And so they said, hey man, let's take a ride. And when I got outside, I said, no, I ain't riding tonight, fellas. So I went home, and the next day, the police were looking for all those dudes. One did two, one did five, one did seven. I did zero. Well, watch this. Well, watch this. And so um, that, 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 that was my story. That, that was my, my fallenness that, that was all over me. And one night, um, I was riding with a friend, um, and um, I had two friends, and I was riding with this friend of mine who was riding down 8th Street. In Jacksonville, that's rough. Police pulled me over, gave me a ticket. Um, I took the ticket, bought it up, threw it out the window, went on about my business, went, went on about my business. And the next day, and I tell people this story, the next, my daddy used to go fishing every Sunday morning. That was a Saturday night. He go fishing every Sunday morning. Never drove my mother's car. My friend, his name was Gary. Gary Smith called me that morning and said, man, I left a dime bag in your car. Oh, well, you left what? My daddy was, listen, my daddy was 5'5", five, five, had a hook in one and a 38 in the other. And my daddy said to us, if we, boy, if I ever catch you with that dope, I'm going to kill you. Mm. 
Now, I, don't, I didn't know whether he was going to kill me or not, but I believed it. I believed it. I want you to understand my mindset. While my daddy had my mother's car for the first time going fishing, and it's a dime bag of reefer, Colombian gold, under the seat. And I didn't know what my future was going to be. When my daddy got home and didn't say anything, I went and got that stuff, man, and threw it away. You, do, you, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm telling you how God wrote my story. That's my fault in this. That's in the scripture. All have sinned and come short of, of, the, of the glory of God. But watch my redemption. I was so nervous that night that I had a friend named Michael Smith. That's another friend. That's a Jesus friend. Yeah, he's a Jesus friend. He said, man, come go to church with me, man, to the West Side Church of Christ. Dr. Uh, Charlie McClendon um, was doing a workshop on evangelism. And I went, that's, that, it was a Sunday night. I just got through Sunday morning. It was a Sunday night, and I found the Lord. <laughs> I got baptized on Sunday night. Uh, Brother Zebedee Moore from Mount Austin, Georgia, was, had just started preaching at the West Side Church in Jacksonville, and that guy could preach, man. I had never heard. See, I grew up going to Sunday evening church. I used to play a lead guitar, and I used to be in a group. We used to, I used to, my brother used to play the bass, but we weren't going for Jesus. <laughs> but no Jesus in any, any of that. And, and so, uh, but he could preach, man. He, he, he could preach, and I would go to church, man, and go to church, and I'd, I'd go to church on Sunday morning and go to latest night on Sunday night, and i go to Bible study on Wednesday night, go to latest night. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And them old dudes sitting in the corner, they recognized that. They had me from latest night to McDonald's. You know, old men go to McDonald's. So they had me, they had me at McDonald's. That's my story. That's, and, and that's my re redemption story. Um, um, and, and watch what God did for me in redemption. Um, I heard, I heard uh, Marcus say he wasn't a good student. I wasn't a good student in high school. I wasn't a good student in college. I wasn't a good student at all. Not at all. You know, um, and so, um, but um, Brother Moore said, he said, man, um, I want you to go to Terrell, Texas. Never heard of Terrell. Never heard of Southwestern. Never heard of any of that. But when he told me that he wanted me to go because he looked at me and said, he said, Son, young man, I see something in you. So I went to Southwestern. My mother cried, you know, and, but I went to Southwestern. You know, never been on a plane, got on a plane, got to Dallas, Fort Worth, and it didn't land. And I said, what's going on? Because I had never been to a place somebody got, had to tell me I was in a holding pattern. You know what I'm saying? Never, you know, I was like, well, okay, we're going to land. I hope we're going to land. You know? But I went to Southwestern. And Veronica was there. The people, everybody knew everybody. They went to the youth conferences all southeastern and the national. And they been in church singing. And I was just an old boy um, that didn't know anybody and didn't know anything about the Church of Christ. Nothing. See, what I want you to tell me in my redemption, I was a new convert in terror. I was a new con, so my new convert years was in terror at Southwestern. It wasn't in the church. It was in a, on a campus. And what God introduced to me were some people that were phenomenal. I used to sit around and look at people and study people and engage people and some of my best friends today. I tell you, if I walk out of this building and something happened, I could make phone calls and people would make their way. That, that's, that's how tight that is, I'm, I'm telling you. And so that's my redemption story, right on that campus, campus, you know. And I still wasn't a good student, but all of a sudden the light came on. The light came on, you know. And I remember when the light came on, and I started studying, and I started doing my work, and I started being ch challenging myself, and started being influenced by people who were doing things. Um, that's my redemption story, you know. And, and, and I graduated with my bachelor's from Southwestern. That's my re redemption story. Now, and so, and so, but here's the other thing that Southwestern did for me. See, I like North Mississippi. You know why? Can I tell you why I like North Mississippi? Because I married a girl from North Mississippi. Yeah, I, I married a girl from Oxford, Mississippi. Rivers Hill Church. Windy Hill. Boy, what you talking about a blessing. Ain't nothing like a country girl from Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah, ain't nothing like a strong country girl from Mississippi, man. When I tell you my wife, that's a real woman. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I mean, she brought stuff to my life. She she brought 
She brought light to my life. She brought discipline to my life. She she brought she's brought she, oh hallelujah praise the Lord. I'm gonna move on, but that that's listen to me. That's my medicinal story. So I, I graduated and I preached in a little town called Enterprise, Alabama. Preached in New Orleans for ten years. Been in Glass City in Toledo. This is my 25th year at Glass City. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I went from creation coming into this world. I went from sin and fallenness to redemption. I stand here because God has redeemed me. And I, I stand here and say, Lord, I thank you for it because I wasn't a good student, but I went and got my master's. I went to United, got my MDiv. I mean, excuse me, got my, my DMed. And I, I, let me tell you, when I, I, I had to defend my dissertation, and this has been my journey, and I could never forget, I, had, I could have two people in my, in, when I was defending my dissertation, one was my wife, and the other was Dr. Kenneth Green, my mentor. And they could tell you today, I said in that defense, because I had a partner who didn't make it, he had to go back. And when I, I, they told me that I had written that dissertation so well that I, I defended for 30 minutes. That's unheard of. You know, but that's how God brought me on this journey and, and showed me the way. And I stand, I stand grateful, you know. So I, I know the evolution. I know what God can do for you. And he did it for me through Southwestern. And so now as I go to my seat, here's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for that hope of glory. Because at the end of the day, we're not going to always be on this earth. So I'm not sad. One day he's going to call my name. And I'm going to experience that hope of glory. And if I say get it, you say got it. Get it? I love his story. I absolutely love his story. And I want to tell you that um, Mr. Savala is looking for some singers. I heard there were some singers here in Mississippi. So we're going to ask D2 to come to the stage and give us three selections. D2. I'm just here to introduce them because they won't introduce themselves. This is uh, this is uh, they call them themselves D2 because they're devoted to. Because we have me and my brothers and some family members, we have a group called Devoted, and they've been sitting around listening, and they started just singing one day, right? Uh, so they are D2 from Memphis, Tennessee, by way of Bluff Road Church of Christ in Coldwater, Mississippi. We're going to get out the way and uh, try not to mess them up. Okay. No one can take it. No one can take it. No one can take it. No one can take my joy. No one can take it. No one can take it. No one can take it. No one can take, take my, my joy. joy. No one can take it. No one can take it. Take my joy. No one can take it. Take it. Take my joy. No one can take it. Take it. No. 
never yeah. ever leave your side yeah. Just follow, yeah. let him guide To the place he's prepared For us in the end Hey, hey yeah, 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 yeah Joy Unspeakable
Oh my goodness. OMG. So, uh, oh, I, I, okay. I don't know what to say. But I want to introduce you to someone who does know what to say. This is the president of the National Alumni Association for Southwestern Christian College. And she's from down here, Vernicia Cathy. had a whole lot to say before I just witnessed what I witnessed. I am totally blown away. I'm from down here. Tate County. That's where we're from. Robert Carter. Emmanuel Carter. That's us. Coldwater, Mississippi, Hernando, Independence. Tate County. If you were Davis, Carter, Eccles, Wooten, that's us. Orlando, Lucy. We are a singing and loving family. We get together every July. We haven't done that in three years. When they walked through the door today, I knew I was all right. Family was here. My cousin Angie's back there. I was already a little emotional because my tour sister grew up here, Charlotte Ward, and I saw her mom. Yes, yes. I know Paul, uh, Victoria, yeah. Octavia, oh. Hernando, Mississippi loves Southwestern Christian College. Yeah. But why I'm so full is because people want to know if the family all right, the family's all right. <laughs> we all right. Y'all have I'm blown away. I grew up with D1. <laughs> Devoted. The daddies. Moke and John and Josh and Jeff. I had no idea about D2. Y'all were amazing. Y'all were amazing. I told uh, Savala a couple of weeks ago, we, he and I go to church together, and I was on the church parking lot. He said, well, yeah, we're going to Hernando, Mississippi. I said, oh, I'm going. Those are my folks down there. I'm going. I said, have you ever heard of a group called Devoted? Look them up. Well, now we know about Devoted and D2. Right. But I bring you greetings from Southwestern, Southwestern I'm tongue-tied. From Southwestern Christian College, home of the Mighty Rams. We are 75 years old. We were founded in 1948 in Fort Worth, Texas, and then made the transition to Terrell in 1949. Before G.P. Pouser died, who's our founder, they drove him around the circle, which was a military campus. And his sons, Levi Kennedy, one of his, his grandsons was here a moment ago, Brother Mason, he had to leave. But Brother Kennedy's grandson, one of his grandsons was in here tonight. But G.E. Stewart and R.N. Hogan and the great J.S. Winston brought Brother Bowser so he could see Southwestern before he went to sleep. And so we are still in that rich legacy. 75 years later, we're still here. Some people counted us out, but it's places like Hernando, Mississippi that keep us going. It's places like Memphis, Tennessee. I was in, we were at Quince this morning, and I let them know while we were in COVID, Memphis never stopped supporting and loving Southwestern. And that has been very important to us. I want to give you the vision, and I don't want to take a lot of time. I gave Brother Bird some of my time. So I'm going, <laughs> but I'm going to give you the vision. As I mentioned, I bring you greetings from Southwestern. I am the president of the National Alumni Association, and I thank the alumni. Truly, from here, you can go anywhere. We have doctors, lawyers, judges, actors, motivational speakers. One day, I was going for my, my main job at the city of Dallas. I wanted to do a, a, a celebrity cameo. I pull up cameo, and who's on there? Marcus Black. <laughs> you know, so I mean, there's amazing people that have come through 200 Bowser Circle, and we can take so many more. We um, are open for business. We have not closed. We were, you know, shut down for just for COVID. We did everything online, but we were in a hybrid situation. But now we're back full on campus, and so we are heavily recruited. Hernando, y'all know y'all send students up there. Uh, 
this area, Tate County, period, you still send students, so please continue to support us. But Dr. Seamster is our president. He is an alum. That's some of his classmates right here. He's an alum of Southwestern Christian College, and he follows in the rich tradition of our other alum that was the president, Dr. Jack Evans, who is the longest serving HBCU president in the world. No one will ever exceed that legacy. And Dr. Seamster doesn't even try. He'll tell you. He's the great. But I'm here now, and I'm doing my best. So we know the scripture says, if you don't know the vision, you will perish. So I want to share with you the new vision for Southwestern Christian College. First of all, we want to make sure that our Doris Johnson Library is reopened. What happened with some, some maintenance issues that were going on in there, it's housed inside of the Hogan Stewart Learning Center. And so what we wanted to do was get that back open again, and it's construction going on there right now. If you go onto the campus right now, you'll see some trucks down there because they're working on getting that building back open. We want to renovate Bowser Circle. So if you've ever driven up into the campus of Southwestern Christian College, it is a circle, 200 Bowser Circle, and we want to beautify that and make that beautiful so it can just stand out. And we've already started with that. And then we want to implement a criminal justice program. If you get to meet and talk to some of our students today, a couple of them will tell you that they're interested in criminal justice. With things that are going on in the world today, we want to make sure that our students are equipped in criminal justice. And another good thing is we have our own police station at Southwestern Christian College, meaning you can't just roll up on us and think you can say and do anything. You will get stopped at the gate, and our own police department will take care of what goes on in Southwestern. So that is beautiful. And then we want to have maximum capacity in our residence dorms. Now, when I was a student there, I graduated in 91. When I was a student, there was about two to three in the dorm. The student, excuse me, two or three in a room. The students look at me like, Miss Venetia, you've got to be kidding me. But no, we really were two to three in a room. And so I'm not going to say we're going to do that again, but we want to get maximum capacity. Right now, we can hold about 200 on campus comfortably, and so we want to be at maximum capacity. Then we want to strengthen our online platform. Why that is so important is because what we learned during COVID is that there were so many people that wanted to attend Southwestern through the years, but just for various reasons could not come. Maybe it was the location or just not that time in their life, but they told us if we offered classes online, they would love to take them. So we want to make sure that we strengthen our online platform. Then we want to construct the outdoor pavilion. How many of you have actually been on the campus of Southwestern Christian College? We used to have a building called the Jack Evans Administration Building, which was the center of the campus. And we used to hang out there on the steps and in the chapel. We used to sing all day, all night. That building burned. And we lost a lot of that, that spirit. So we want to bring that back. So we're building an outdoor pavilion. So the students, some of the most beautiful songs have ever been written in Southwestern. Do you know that? Y'all, what that song? I'm glad I know you. I was there when John Emerson and David Wilson were sitting in the sub humming it when they brought that together. I, Sylvia Rose, some of the greatest songs ever written, ever, were written at 200 Bows and Circle. I was, Veronica Williams is here. She was my choral director. And okay, so now you heard them sing, so you know now that I really can't sing, right? Because when I was at Southwestern, it was very competitive. I was there with the David Wilsons and the John Greens and the Robert Guys. So it was kind of hard to get a song. But I got to ooh and ah under Veronica Williams. But she wrote some of the most beautiful music. I'll be wearing a crown, but I believe all that happened down at 200 Bowser. So we want to make sure that we bring back that, that creativity that we used to have when we were just sitting around singing. And then we are, we are fully accredited, meaning we, you can, from here, you can truly go anywhere. We are fully accredited to, through SACS COC, which is the number one governing board of educate, educators in schools. That means you can go to Southwestern and transfer to Yale. You can go to Southwestern and transfer to Harvard. You can go to Southwestern and work on your PhD at SMU. I'm living proof. So I know from here you can go anywhere. And because we are accredited with SACS, so as soon as we got accredited, they start looking at you again. So now we're in our review period, five-year review, and we want to get rid of it ahead of time and be on schedule. So those are the visions that Dr. Seamster has laid out. If you come to lectureship um, this upcoming year, you'll hear it again. He laid it out this past lectureship, but this is what we're pushing for. On April the 15th, April the 15th, it's coming around the corner, we're having high school day. This is the first in-person high school day that we, well, we actually had one last year, but it was a little COVID friendly. And so this time we're open full throttle. If you can come down to Terrell, it's 
it's only a six, seven hour drive, not that far, um, and come down and stay the weekend with us, or just come in that morning, come that evening, and just come down to high school day, meet some of our faculty and staff, tour our buildings. You could actually try out for the course today, but you could try out for the course um, there as well. Try out for the basketball team. We have um, men and women's basketball. We've got track. We've got volleyball. They're bringing soccer back. It's just a lot of y'all looking at me. Did I miss a sport? Oh, okay. So they're looking like Ms. Venetia, you didn't call me out. Okay. So we are bringing, we have all those sports available to you. So please, please, please consider Southwestern. Go to our website, www.swcc.edu. Look us up and find more, out more about Southwestern. We're here today, can talk to you. There's another activity they're going to do at the end that can just teach you so much more about college and about the experience, but truly from Southwestern Christian College, you can go anywhere. And then last, the National Alumni Association. Well, it's not the last, but almost the last. The National Alumni Association. Belinda Nahanana is the vice president. She's over um, uh, membership, not membership, but chapters, local chapters. So if there, we would like to revitalize the chapter in this area. So if you're interested in doing that, please join the Alumni Association tonight. It's only $25 for one year. And you don't even have to be a graduate of Southwestern, but if you did come to Southwestern and you were there one day, guess what? You're an alum. And so that's in our Constitution. And so, uh, but you don't have to be a member or a graduate of Southwestern Christian College to be a member of the Alumni Association. You could be a heritage member. That means you just want to support us. We do a lot of great work. And one of those great things is Retool Your School. Has anybody heard about Retool Your School? It's money through Home Depot. Um, they're giving $2 million to HBCUs, and Southwestern is on the list. We're in cluster three. Just go to retoolyourschool.com, cluster number three, look for Southwestern Christian College, vote. Now, they told you tonight it's not a financial thing tonight. We're not raising any money. But guess what? You can help us get some money from Home Depot. They're giving it away. And Dr. Simpson tells us we don't leave no money on the table. So please help us. It's whoever gets the most votes. All you got to do is land in the top 10. Right now we're number six. If we stay in that area, we'll get about 50,000. But we want to go on up. You can vote as many times as you want, all day, every day, anytime you think about it. I was logged into the, uh, to Dallas event earlier today. They were telling people, get your mama phone, your grandmama phone, whoever, just vote. Keep us, keep us number in that top 10 and hopefully we can get number one. Thank you so much for inviting us to be here today. Now, Brother Wallace, I know he may, and let me tell you about the Wallaces. The Wallaces go way back with Southwestern too. You know, so we, we love the Wallaces. He, he didn't even think about it when he was called and asked, could Southwestern come? And I was cracking jokes like, they don't have no evening service no more. What are they talking about? He said, we're going to have one. So, <laughs> so thank you so much, Brother Wallace. Thank you, Hernando. Thank you, West Hill Grove. It is so good to be here. It's so good to be home. And I love you. And I'll see family. See y'all in a few months. Our family reunion is going to be here. So we'll see y'all in a few months. Thank you so much. Thank you, Renisha. So we are going to close out of this part, but I hope that you'll stay with us and do the fun thing. We're doing an escape room. How many of you have ever done an escape room? So escape rooms are super, super fun, and this is escape to college. So I'm gonna ask the, um, the Southwestern friends, before we, in fact, before we do that, how many Southwestern alums do we have in the audience? How many Southwestern alumni? All right, I see Angie Wooten. We called her Angie B. Good when she was at Southwestern. She used to say, I try to be good, but they just won't let me be good. When people were getting on her nerves. <laughs> we, that's one thing about Southwestern. When you go to Southwestern, you, you get a nickname. Everybody has a nickname at Southwestern. I'm not gonna tell you mine, but everybody has a nickname. So I'm gonna ask them to go to their stations. All of the escape rooms are over in um, the educational wing. There are five cards, and anybody can do it. It's not just for young people. Um, yesterday, no, in Mac, I think it was MacAlma, we had three older ladies who were having themselves a ball going through the escape room. They had so much fun. So it's for all ages, and there are prizes. So you can do it by yourself, and, and um, students, if you'll go to whichever rooms y'all are helping in. Um, I know what I told you, but because of the, because of the time. Um, 
you don't, you can go by yourself or up to three people in your group. So one person, two people, or three people is the max. Whichever person or team finishes first, completely escapes, we have prizes, we have gift cards. So you can choose your gift card to Amazon or Chick-fil-A.